Hello everyone and welcome to another casual review. I'm going to take you way back to 1986 and talk about The Legend of Zelda, the original on the NES. I have beat this game before, but it was kind of like a team effort. It was back um, with in the olden days, I used to work at an apartment complex and uh, my crew and I played this game through on a Raspberry Pi. This is like an emulator machine and so it's kind of like a group effort. We'd all take turns to play and I was these guys were like significantly older than I was was so they all knew where to go. I didn't really beat it myself but I, I have seen the, the whole playthrough or at least most of it before. This time I am playing this on the Legend of Zelda Game & Watch. It has the original Legend of Zelda, the second Legend of Zelda, and uh, Link's Awakening. So arguably this is one of the worst ways to be playing this game. It's not like the screen is bad or anything. It's, it's actually a very nice bright screen. However, the screen itself is pretty tiny so it's, it's just just like uh, giving you a little bit of ice rain. It's probably a lot better for you to be playing this on your Switch or on the TV, but you know, it's it's more of a collector's item and I think it's fun. So I thought, why not? Uh, that's the footage that you're seeing here is me playing it on the game and watch. Arguably, probably the worst way to be playing this game would be on an original Game Boy Advance though, it's just like a non-backlit screen. But this, this comes close second because of how small the screen is. So what's the plot of Legend of Zelda? Well, to find that out, we have to look at the video games manual, which uh, if you have, if you're a big fan of Legend of Zelda, I actually recommend that you take a look through this because it has a lot of cool information that isn't revealed in the um, actual game itself. The actual game itself is actually pretty cryptic with just one line hints. So uh, if you just look at this at the manual, basically what happens is so like these three characters, Zelda, Ganon, and Link, we all know them. They're like locked in this never ending battle with each other and they all represent different forms of of the Triforce. So Ganon is the Triforce of Power, Link is the Triforce of Courage, and Zelda has the Triforce of Wisdom. Basically Ganon, he's trying to take over the, the world like he usually is, and so to prevent Ganon from getting the Triforce of Wisdom, she splits up the Triforce of Wisdom into eight different segments and hides them throughout different parts of the world. And so now, uh, now that Ganon has imprisoned Zelda, it's Link's job to gather up the eight pieces of the Triforce of Wisdom in order to defeat Ganon and save Princess Zelda. I actually think this is pretty interesting. Um, as far as like most of the other Legend of Zelda plots, it's like usually you're trying to get all three uh, pieces of the Triforce, the Courage, Wisdom, and the Power. In this one, you're just trying to piece together the Triforce of Wisdom. So I, that's kind of a fun little like a unique take on the Zelda. Granted, this is like the first one, so it's probably like the main take of a Legend of Zelda plot. Yeah, this is all revealed through the manual. There's no looking this up in the game. Like it, it's, it basically doesn't give you any hint. You're basically just like plopped in the middle of this giant overworld and it's your job to decide where to go. You know, and when you think about it, this is like one of the first quote unquote open world games because it's basically just like, okay, go wherever you want. Like granted, there is like an intended order for you to go and do all these dungeons, but you can actually do a couple of them, a couple of them out of order, even if you don't have the right items. And as long as you're like skilled enough, technically you could do a couple of these out of order. But this is the reason why I absolutely played following a guide and if you are playing this for the first time ever I do recommend you look up some uh, external help of some kind be it just a map of the overworld or a step-by-step -step guide on where to go next I actually kind of recommend the step-by-step -step because there are a couple really powerful items that will significantly help out your gameplay because this game is hard a lot of old games are tough like this they're meant to be consuming all of your time and unless you want to spend the next month of your life just wandering around aimlessly in this world, I do recommend looking up some uh, external help. It is full of one of my least favorite mechanics in a video game, and that being hidden walls that actually, like I said, have some pretty powerful items. There's like a magical ring that re will reduce the amount of damage that you take by half. There's You can get upgrades to your sword that increase your damage, and potentially you could just straight up miss these really powerful upgrades if you aren't sure exactly where to go. Um, there's a lot of hidden walls that have like a ton of root in order for you to like buy potions and things like that so uh, unless you want to just destroy tile by tile uh, using all your 
through bombs or using the candle to reveal hidden areas, look up a guide for sure. You can get some cryptic messages from certain NPCs, like let's say you're just wandering around the overworld and you'll come across a cave, there will be an old man in the cave and he'll say like, oh, uh, go through the waterfall, but it's just like, okay, what waterfall? How do I go through it? What are you talking about? And it turns out like, oh, you go to this waterfall and use the, the flute to reveal the, the area for the seventh dungeon. And it's it's just so cryptic like that. And um, maybe it's some of that stuff is revealed through this manual. I'm just looking through it right now. And it seems like there's a lot of hints and tricks and some actual cool artwork here. I love the cartoony take on uh, Zelda, the first Zelda. I, I don't know, it's just, it's something nostalgic, and since this came out in 1986, I this is before my time, but I still get nostalgic about like this kind of uh, old school cartoony artwork. It kind of gives me like some Black Cauldron vibes, just looking at it, that it's like uh, a, a very fantastical art style, but also in a cartoony way. But even like the items themselves, it doesn't tell you like the item name or what the item does. You either have to try it yourself and determine it by trial and error, or you have to look up what each item does that you uncover through them from a dungeon. And that brings us to the meat and potatoes of this game, the dungeons. That's what Zelda is all about. However, if you haven't played this Zelda game before, but you've played other Zelda games, they, they play a little bit differently. In most modern day Zelda games, you'll go into a dungeon and it's like you have this curated path, but there's still some exploration to be had. You gather up keys and eventually you fight like a mini boss and get an item and then you use that item to help you get through the rest of the dungeon and defeat the boss. Well, in this game, it's actually kind of interesting how keys work because you are able to purchase keys outside of dungeons and really stock up on your keys in order to go through locked doors. And you can even use the keys throughout different dungeons. So you could uh, potentially mess up a run and have to spend a lot of rupees to buy more keys in order to progress through a dungeon if you use keys in a different dungeon. I'm not sure why you would bounce between dungeons, but potentially you could do that. And a lot of times you can even miss an important item like let's say, I don't know, like the wand. You could miss the wand and never have to use it. And at least as far as I remember, I don't remember ever actually having to use the wand, like being forced to, but you could potentially miss out on a wand, on the wand in a dungeon and beat the dungeon and just never know that you miss out on a key item or at least a very useful item. So yeah, just another reason why I think I would recommend using a walkthrough or a guide of some kind. Items themselves are a little tedious. If you remember, think of like the old school NES controller, you basically have the D-pad, the A, the B button, the start and select. And so you're, you're usually your sword, I don't think you can swap out your sword ability, but that's going to be mapped to the A button. And so the only way to cycle between your items is by pausing the menu, going through which item you want to do, and map it to the B button. And then every time you want to switch out your weapon, you have to pause and change out your item. This is something that you get used to, like this is just more of like a relic of its time. But if you're used to more modern day games, Games, it, it, is, it takes a little bit of time to go through that pause menu. Another reason why this is a fun game to play through, especially if you are a Legend of Zelda fan though, is it's fun just seeing like the 8-bit versions of all these enemies that you know and love, like the Octolings or the Dodongos, and there's a, there's a ton of other enemies too that even appear as recently as the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but you, it's fun seeing like these 8-bit versions of these 8-bit takes of what these modern day enemies looked like back back in the day. And it's interesting to see like how these enemies have persisted this long, like 1986, that's a long time ago. And we're still making modern takes of these enemies from way back when. Even the chip tunes, they get so nostalgic because it's just like that old school overworld music. And you better hope that you love that old school music because you are going to be hearing it on repeat over and over again. The do, 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 do. And even like all the dungeon music is the same that haunting do 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 so maybe it's in your best interest to turn the volume down after a while because it can get quite repetitive but it is iconic just like this whole game like this whole legend of zelda game is so iconic and and important to the video game space i have a ton of respect for this game and everything it did in the field but this game can be pretty difficult even with all of these upgrades that i mentioned before like reducing damage taken and increasing damage that i do enemies can be 
be quite tough because they move pretty randomly and sporadically, so it's hard to predict where they're going to go next, and they move quick, quite fast. And unless you have a ranged weapon unlocked, pretty much the only way you can damage them is by getting up close and personal because Link's sword only does one tile in front of him. So you have to get quite close to them, and you never know if they're going to make a beeline straight towards you and damage you. Luckily enough, though, you do unlock a boomerang pretty early into the game, and this freezes enemies, or at least most enemies, in their place. So that helps a little bit because you can freeze them and attack them, but I gotta love when I get that stopwatch power watch. And basically, like, whenever you defeat an enemy, they have uh, a chance of dropping an item, be it, like, a heart to heal you or some rupees, this is the currency, or a stopwatch, and this freezes all enemies in the room, and it's such, like, a godsend whenever you see that stopwatch and you're in one of the more difficult rooms with more powerful enemies because it just freezes them, and it ought it's like an automatic, hey, I cleared this room. Uh, otherwise, you, you just have to randomly try and predict where these enemies are going to move next. Which brings me to my next point. I actually think like the bosses in this game are pretty easy. They don't scale up over time. Um, sometimes you even have a repeat of bosses in later dungeons, but they have like the same stats as they did at in the earlier dungeon. So it's almost like a cakewalk. I find that a lot of the rooms with a ton of random enemies is more difficult than a room with a big boss in it. Sometimes like there's a boss where um, you just shoot him in the eye once. When his eye is open, you shoot him in the eye with a bow and arrow and that that's it. You beat it. Yay, you get your heart piece and, and your, your piece of the Triforce and move on your merry way. Other rooms are full of like whiz robes and these guys are actually pretty tough. They can take a lot of health um, when they hit you and they can teleport all over the place so uh, there's some there's some tougher enemies there but the bosses are, are a piece of cake in my opinion even Ganon at the end of the game I didn't think was too difficult granted by then I had uh, all, unlocked all of the upgrades that I possibly could and all of the heart pieces I guess when you think about it unless you count like each hidden wall I 100% completed this game because I followed a walkthrough pretty closely you know I wouldn't complain about a remake to this Zelda game though like if you if you still think like that this original Zelda game should remain untouched you still had this original version to play through I just think um to, in order to modernize it a little bit and to give other people a chance to revisit this iconic classic let's just give it like the Link's Awakening treatment and, and uh, uh, update it a little bit you know but still keep the root of the game the game can also chug pretty hard I know I'm not like quite familiar with how like ROMs work and uh, I obviously Obviously, I know this is more like on the game than the hardware that is running the game because it is pretty small, but when there are a lot of enemies on the screen and they are all shooting projectiles, this game can stutter into the single frame rate, so it, it can chug a little bit, but nothing too serious. This is just another relic of its time, I suppose. It's a shorter game, especially if you are following a walkthrough or you know exactly where you're going. You could probably potentially play this game in a day, maybe like four or five hours if you really knew exactly where to go. Otherwise, if you're wandering around aimlessly, I could see this game taking a month just because of like how obscure this game is in terms of direction. Like I just did a casual review of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword and that was so handholdy, told you exactly where to go multiple times so you would never get confused on what to do next. In this game, it just plops you right in Hyrule and says go for it. It's like the exact opposite of Skyward Sword. Over Overall, like I said, I, I still think there's some enjoyment to be had here. Sometimes you go back to some of these older games, especially games that like came out way before I was alive, and I just play for maybe like 15 minutes and call it a day. I'm personally going to give this game, in terms of enjoyability, a 3 out of 5. I, you know, check it out. It's available all over the place. The NES Classic, this new Legend of Zelda game and watch. I believe, I, like, I'd be surprised if it wasn't in the Nintendo. Nintendo Switch online subscription service where you can play all those old NES games. I would be shocked if it wasn't there and that's like 20 bucks a year. So it's worth a playthrough at least one. I really think it's because I have such an affinity for the Legend of Zelda series that I got such a kick out of playing this game. So if you are a big Legend of Zelda fan, I think it's worth it just a playthrough to get this 
uh, notch in your Legend of Zelda belt and say that you've beaten it and kind of see where this whole series got its roots from. But I want to hear from you guys. Did you play this game way back in the 1980s? What was your experience playing through it? I've read a lot of fun memories about this game, just people getting so nostalgic about it, just get telling stories of sleepovers, playing this game at night with their friends or staying up really late and finally beating Ganon after months of wandering around. I, I want to hear your stories. That's it for me, though. I'll talk to you later. Bye!